Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create the look of an aged 19th century daguerreotype photo. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, click the small subscribe button at the lower right corner or the link in my video's description below. I provided a Photoshop template that you can download so you can follow along. Its link is in my video's description below or project files. It includes two layers, a texture of scratches and a daguerreotype photo texture. If you want to rotate the template to make it vertical, go to Image, Image Rotation, and 90 degrees clockwise. To see the entire document on your canvas, press Ctrl or Command-0. Open a photo that you'd like to use for this project. It could be color or black and white. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. To place it onto the template, make sure your Move tool is open and drag it onto the tab of the template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. To resize and reposition the photo, press Ctrl or Command T to open your Transform tool. If you can't see the Transform's entire bounding box, press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit it onto your canvas. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. To reposition it, go inside the bounding box and drag the photo. Then, press Enter or Return. Drag the photo below the bottom layer. To zoom it in or out, press Ctrl or Command and the plus or minus key on your keyboard. Click the eyeball icons next to the textures to temporarily hide them. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White, which makes a color image appear grayscale. Change the preset from default to High Contrast Blue Filter. This filter will ultimately make our image more dramatic, however, it does darken areas that we don't want too dark. For example, in this case, I'd like to bring back the brightness in the areas of the face and uniform that are presently in shadow. To do this, click the photo to make it active and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We'll merge the black and white adjustment layer with a copy of the photo by shift clicking the adjustment layer to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command E. Open your Dodge tool and check your foreground color. If it's not white, press D on your keyboard to make the colors default to black and white and then press X to invert them. Now, white is your foreground color. Open your brush picker. We'll adjust the Dodge tool's size in a moment. Make its hardness 0%. Choose Midtones and make the exposure 100%. Then press Enter or Return. To adjust the size of the Dodge tool, first make sure your Caps Lock key isn't on and press the left or right bracket key on your keyboard. Then brush over the areas you want to brighten. Make the daguerreotype texture visible and active and change its blend mode to soft light. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it and change its blend mode to multiply. We'll brighten areas of our image by clicking the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the copy of the texture. Open your brush tool and brush picker. You can adjust the brush's size by typing it in here or by pressing your bracket keys. Its hardness is 0% and its opacity and flow are both 100%. Brush over those areas you want to brighten. This is revealing the original daguerreotype texture under the layer mask. Make the scratches layer visible and active and change its blend mode to screen. Next, we'll give our daguerreotype a sepia color. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. 
check colorize, and for the hue, type in 36. A daguerreotype photo itself is now finished. However, to complete its look, let's add handwritten text on the bottom. First, we'll darken the bottom with a soft dark vignette in order to see our text better. Scroll to the bottom and make the black and white photo active and make a new layer above it. We'll add the dark vignette gradient in the empty layer. Make your foreground color black. Open your gradient tool and make sure the linear gradient icon is active. Open your gradient thumbnails and click the black to transparent preset. Go to the bottom of your image and press and hold the shift key as you drag the tool straight up approximately this much. We can adjust its opacity if we want after we add our text. Make the top daguerreotype texture active and make a new layer above it. Open your horizontal type tool and make your foreground color white by pressing X to invert your foreground and background colors. I'm using a font called Emily Austin. This font beautifully captures the quill pen handwriting of the 19th century and earlier. If you'd like to use it, I provided its link as well. If you're not sure how to install fonts, watch my tutorial showing you how. I provided that link as well. I'll make its size 35 points, however, feel free to adjust its size. Its anti-aliasing is sharp and left alignment. Click on your document and type out your text. To center it horizontally, open your Move tool and press Ctrl or Command A to select your document. Click the Align Horizontal Centers icon, then deselect it. To lower or raise your line of text, press the Down or Up arrow on your keyboard. I'd like the text to look more delicate, so I'll control click or command click the large T of my text layer to make a selection of the entire line. I'll hide the text and make a new layer above it. I'll go to Select, Modify, and Contract. I'll contract it one pixel. Then, I'll click OK or press Enter or Return. I'll fill it with white by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete, which fills it with the foreground color. Then, I'll deselect it. I'll reduce its opacity to 80% to let a little of the background show through. I'll make the gradient vignette active and reduce its opacity to 80% as well. If my tutorials have helped you learn or improve in Photoshop, please consider supporting my channel by becoming a patron on Patreon. For as little as $2 per month, you not only help keep my tutorials free, you'll also be able to watch my new tutorials one week before anyone else can see them on YouTube. Click the Patreon button at the top corner or the link in my video's description. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.